Hey, welcome to episode 14. So this is the week of September 8th, 2023 to September 14th, 2023. And let's dive in. I got quite a bit done this week. I was really focused on getting my listings up and uh, got a little other thing that happened too that I'll tell you about at the end. But let's go through the diary, then we'll go through the numbers, and then I'll tell you what happened. So Friday, uh, I had about 15 sales, and I should really update that based on yesterday's numbers because it seems to be like 20-ish every day, but I'm spending a little bit more than I'm making, unfortunately. So Friday, I put up 59 new listings. That brought me up to... 1,265 total. Sunday, the 10th, uh, I had about 20 sales that day. Again, spent a little bit more than I made. 41 new listings, so that crossed me over the 1,300 mark, so uh, 1,306. And then Monday, uh, 15 sales at at mid-afternoon, which was great. And I had about 41 new listings that day, so that brought me up to uh, 1,347. And Tuesday, you can see I was very consistent this week. I had like seven sales so far at like mid-afternoon. 61 new listings today. It ended up being about 20 for the day. Total listings, 1,408. So I crossed the 1,400 mark. And then Wednesday, uh, September 13th, I had 18 in one order. So the way I've done it, um, and it seems to be working, I've been getting some higher average order values is I'll have like buy two, get a higher percent off, buy three, get a higher percent off, buy four or more, get a higher percent off. So it entices people to actually buy more and more and more. And this will loop back to what I'll tell you about at the end too. So I was at, I was very happy with that. That was a good order for me, a really good order. So somebody literally just sat on my store and went like, I like this, 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 and this. They bought 18 things in one order. So that was awesome. So I was at 1,454. Uh, Thursday, yesterday, I had 21 sales and I did 24 listings. So my total was 1,478. Now, um, we'll go through the numbers real quick. So today, just let me reload this, see if I got any more. No. Okay, so I got six orders today. That's cool. Well, let's go custom and let's go the 8th to the 14th. So for the week, I had 148 orders. 8.5% conversion rate, uh, $140.42 in revenue, which is good. Um, it'd be better if I was spending less on ads to get that. But you can see I'm priced super low because I'm in startup phase and I have to compete with all my competitors who are priced super low. Um, I do have a plan to add a membership to this site as well as uh, raising my prices once I start hitting like 100 sales a day or more. Uh, my competitors are doing like five, 600 sales a day, so there's no reason why I can't too. I might even keep the price low and just use it to funnel people into my membership. That's kind of the long-term plan. So it is short-term pain for long-term gain again, uh, as usual. And let's go to my marketing and Etsy ads. And we'll do it for custom. Let's go 8th, 14th. And you can see I spent $229.51, but I had like a hundred, I think it was 140 some orders. 77 came from ads. So half my sales are coming from organic. So what I'm doing right now is I'm blowing money on ads left, right, and center, because I know that it's fueling my organic growth. And I know when I do uh, switch my ads up to stuff that actually works and makes them profitable, I'll be sitting in sitting really pretty. So 229.51, 229.51 divided by seven is what? Divided by seven. So about $32 a day in ads. And I, my revenue though is a, uh, probably about 20 bucks a day. So I'm losing about $12 a day at this point. Because I, I'm being ultra aggressive with this. If I weren't doing this challenge, I, I would have taken this a lot slower. But I need to hit that number uh, as quickly as possible. So I have to do things initially uh, that are uncomfortable, which is like running ads and losing a little bit of money up front. So let's go back to the stats and let's look at all time. So let's go all time. And we're at uh, 369 orders, 5,251 visits, 7% conversion rate, which I'm happy with. And 
$406.59 in revenue. That's not a profit because uh, there are fees, transaction fees, processing fees, relisting fees that come out of that. So you can see uh, down here too, 41% uh, of visits are from Etsy and 59% of visits are from me apparently. Uh, so this direct another is apparently me. Social media, I still don't have that up and running, which is really bad. And I'm not very happy with myself for that. Uh, I should have had this up and running from day one. I don't know why I haven't. But Etsy ads have brought in a ton of clicks. Um, Etsy marketing and SEO. But Etsy search is getting bigger. And the app and other Etsy pages is getting bigger too. So I am, I'm okay with that. Because I, I do have a long-term goal. I don't have a short-term focus here. So one thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, uh, competition. So what you want to do is you want to actually view your competition and you want to make sure that um, you track them. Okay, so I'm just going to pause it for one sec. I just wanted to log out of my store here. So what I'm going to do is let's say you're doing Tumblr wraps. Okay, so you go here and you type in Tumblr wraps. And what I would do is start finding uh, all your big time competitors who are at the place where you want to be. So you go to all filters, you go to star seller, and you go to digital downloads. Click apply. And up here, you start typing in best seller instead of star seller. And now I've got all the best selling stuff on the front page. And what I can start to do then using Everbee is I can find the shops with the most sales. And I can see this one has like 9,414 sales. So I'm gonna click on that. And what I'm interested in is a shop. So that is clearly a <coughs> trademark infringing product selling really well. So this shop itself, the, I mean, they'll be hit with uh, some stuff very soon, but you can see they're actually doing some other things which are kind of cool so you want to keep track of your competition what they have in the featured part is very important because their featured items are the stuff that's working the best then you can look at all items so they do have a lot of trademark infringing stuff which is how they took off but the store itself what i want to do is create a little sheet and i already did this for me and i want to look at um how many sales they have daily so every day i'll log in uh, approximately the same time probably in the morning and I'll go to like five different stores and I'll say, okay, this one had this sales yesterday. Today it's got this amount. Then I can figure out what they're doing daily for sales. And I can also keep track of what they're listing as their featured items. Or um, I can also run this analytics on the whole shop just by clicking analyze listings and go to everything. And then seeing that their, their top sellers for this particular store are basically trademark infringing stuff. Cartoon Princess Mouse Duck, which is, I mean, Disney. So there, there's Minnie Mouse right there. So yeah, this this place just is not the best example of what to follow, but there are other legit ones in here uh, that you can follow, like this Tumblr Studio New York, Tumblr's Planet. There they are again with their other trademark infringing one, Tumblr Designs YY, whatever that is, Tumblr Wrap Designs, and you can start looking at them. You start tracking their sales. You start seeing what they're doing every day. But I'll tell you, be careful. Because I've been doing this. And then every once in a while, you'll see a new store that will pop up on here. And you'll go and look at what they're doing. And you'll see that they have a tremendous amount of sales. And you think, okay, well, I want those sales too. So you start shifting your focus. Uh, you lose focus, I should say. And you start doing what they're doing. And you don't want to do that. So yesterday is a prime example. I spent uh, four, three or four hours because I saw a new store pop up on the radar in my niche and I thought, okay, I have to do what they're doing. And so they had um, these section bundles where they were selling uh, lifetime access to their sections. So every store has like sections. So if we go to this one, the store that will be taken down eventually, they have like um, mug, doodle, alpha, tumbler on sale. Okay, not the best example, but they would have like a mug and then uh, their listing would be selling every mug in this section, past, present, and future. So, and they'd be selling it for like eight bucks or six bucks or something like that. 
So I thought, okay, well, they're making a lot of sales on those. I need to do that too. And I lost focus for about four hours yesterday. And then I said, no, at the end of the night, um, I went back in and I'd only done three of those listings for three of my sections, but I had spent all day like renumbering things and moving it to a Google drive and all that stuff to get it ready to sell. I actually paid my 20 cents each, which is peanuts, but put it up and listed it. And then I said, yeah, no, I, I don't want to do this because this is not my plan. This is not my focus. This is not what I want to do. What I want to do is have a membership for this. So me having those sections for sale uh, contradicts my plan to have a membership for the site. So I had to, I just deactivated the listings. And I, in fact, I ended up going so far as to getting rid of all my bundles because I had five that were running and they were in the feature section on my shop. And honestly, they weren't selling. And I don't know why, but they weren't selling. So for me to create three more bundles and to sell a whole section of like even future listings, it wasn't my game plan and it wasn't what I wanted to do. So be careful when you're watching your competition because you almost uh, get shiny object syndrome and want to hop to what they're doing because you think it's better than what you're doing. But in reality, you just need to take more time with what you're doing. You need to follow the plan and stick to the plan. And um, that's the lesson I learned from this week is don't get distracted. So just because you see somebody else up and coming real quick, like this shop came up real quick, but then you go and dig in a bit and you see, well, yeah, because they're selling like Disney stuff and they're selling Marvel stuff and they're selling all this trademark infringing stuff that eventually they're going to get shut down. And so there will be a time when I go to check this in my tracking and it's like shut down. In fact, the only reason I even follow this shop is, is to see uh, what else they're doing. So if I go to their front page and I like to look at the featured part and see what they're doing, because like this listing is pretty cool. And you can see it's getting a lot of sales. So I know I could easily make a listing like this too, where somebody, it's a memorial tumbler. Uh, like me personally, that's kind of creepy to have, you're drinking out of a thing that's like some dead person. But anyway, I guess other people are into it. <laughs> uh, so you put their name in there. You could easily make this with, um, with Canva or with PhotoP so people can edit it. But um, it's just too bad that the store itself will eventually be shut down and they're gonna owe a lot of money to Disney because Disney has whole whole areas dedicated to taking down shops like this. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is track your competition, but don't be distracted by what they're doing. So just if they're doing something that you see is working for them, uh, but it doesn't align with your plan, don't do it. Just stick to the plan. Stick to what you want to accomplish. That means having goals, and that means having knowing where you want to go first, too. And a lot of people who get into this, they just fly blind, and they're like, they hop over here and hop over here and hop over here, and they can't keep their attention focused on one thing for more than like a week or two, honestly. I've seen it. I've had, oh man, 12,000 people through my doors on my membership site over the years and and i've seen probably 95 percent of them can't stay focused for more than two weeks before they lose interest and they're on to something else and, and it's amazing because if they had just stuck it out they'd be a lot further ahead so stick to the plan don't get distracted but you do want to follow them to see what they're doing because on the other side of the coin it is motivating to see like legit shops that are making like 500 600 sales a day that is motivating as hell i love that so when you're having a bad day and you're like, man, I'm spending a lot of money, I'm making sales, but I'm not profitable yet. Well, go and look at those and then look at what they're accomplishing. And if you're doing the same niche as them and you're making like your totally unique products, but same product niche, you're going to get there eventually too. It's just a matter of time. And time is, is the most important factor on Etsy. Second most is stay focused. Don't get distracted. Don't go to shiny objects. Don't switch gears just because you see another shop doing something that's working well for them. You could add that later once you're up and running and profitable, but don't change course. All right. So that's my update for this week. Um, not too bad. Things are kicking in, uh, into high gear. I can feel the momentum and there are, I, I could do two tweaks right now that would make me profitable, but it would slow down my growth a little bit. So um, the final thing is we are at the 15th today 
And next Thursday, the 21st, will be 90 days for my payment reserve. That will drop off. It's supposed to drop off on the 21st or 22nd. 21st, 22nd is when I'm out of the payment reserve. At that point, um, I think the payment reserve is basically Etsy's three months probation period. When, I, when I'm out of that, I think my sales are gonna skyrocket. So I look forward to that. That's gonna be a fun week. Um, well, once it's gone. Next week, I still am going through the crap, but after that, I think Etsy will spend more on my budget and I think my profits will go up dramatically because my sales will go up and the volume will more than make up for what I'm spending in the ad spend. Long-term uh, picture, you have to go through the pain to get there. All right, so that's my update for this week, week 14. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.